testing. One, two, test, test, test.
Hello everyone, welcome to Bramlage Coliseum in Manhattan, Kansas on the campus of Kansas State University. And we are just about 16 minutes away, 15 minutes away from the opening game of the 2A 2022 state tournament. I want to thank you all for joining us. Not probably going to be very many of you tonight. You probably do see a little bit of video behind us. I have to have that tonight in order to uh, audio broadcast. If you're wondering why I can't, well, those are Kansas State High School Activity Association rules, and therefore uh, they have the uh, NFHS, which some of you are probably watching on right now. Uh, they have the rights to the live video live stream. Thankfully, through the Sterling Bulletin, we are able at least to bring you this, the audio of the game. Hopefully later I will have a video that matches the audio for you to watch on delayed basis, but that'll take some time. The SHS student body is here. You may be able to see them moving behind me a little bit. And uh, the SHS pep band is also Hello, everyone. here. everyone. Welcome yeah. to... Ramlage Coliseum in Manhattan, Kansas, on the campus of Kansas State University. And we are just about 16 minutes. The winner of this game will play Friday at 2 p.m. and face a familiar foe, possibly the 21-1 Berean Academy Warriors or the 21-2 Valley Heights Mustangs. That game will take place right after this one. Um, at scheduled at four o'clock, and you can watch that one too if you're if you're watching on NFHS as well. I am Brian Richter. If you weren't familiar with us all year, the Shark is not with us tonight. He is uh, working a music contest that he committed to a long time ago, and uh, he would be thrilled with this. But uh, hopefully, we'll get him on tomorrow, weather permitting, and we'll have the boys versus Linden. Thanks to the Sterling Bulletin, as I mentioned, and the Kent State High School Activity Association and the Manhattan uh, Visitors Bureau for uh, providing the avenue to once again stream tonight's game for you. It is only audio, and we completely understand if you'd rather watch it live, as I mentioned earlier, on this NFHS channel, as you can watch it on the shsblackbears.com. It could be possible to pair up our audio stream with their video, and if not, we very much appreciate uh, your support and our sponsor, the Sterling Bulletin, tonight. Tonight, the Lady Black Bears take on the 14-8 Mission Valley Vikings out of the Flint Hills League, which is made up of a lot of consolidated schools, including Northern Heights High School, Chase County High School, Council Grove, Mission Valley, which we're playing tonight, Linden, Osage City, West Franklin, and Central Heights. Mission Valley is a consolidated school that began approximately in 1971 in, and is made up of the former high schools from the towns of Eskridge, which is where uh, Mission Valley, if you see it, it says Eskridge, Mission Valley, but the, the school is not there. They were the Dragons, Harveyville, which were the Yellow Jackets, and Dover, which were the Tigers. They all sit, uh, as I mentioned, a consolidated Mission Valley High School, Unified School District that sits kind of equal between all three towns and according to their website sits uh, co it compromises their school district does 372 square miles in four counties while Buncey, Shawnee, Osage and Lyon counties. The maroon and yellow Vikings as I mentioned are 14 and 8. They were the two seed at the uh, Linden substate and were 11 and 8 heading into into last week's tournament. They defeated Kansas City Christian 63 to 14, Central Heights 20 or 44 to 26, and Northern Heights 41 to 35. So it's like a mini league tournament is what it really ended up being. Vikings lost two overtime games by one point. One coming to 1A Division One qualifier Berlin game. Uh, ben Packard. We'll talk about him. He is the. Uh, he is the Mission Valley coach, and we'll talk about him in a minute. While Sterling is making its fourth state tournament appearance in four years, the Vikings are making just their second appearance all time in this 50th year of the girls' state tournament. They lost their only game and their only other appearance back in 1981 to Southwestern Heights, 50-44. to 
1981, as I mentioned, in the 3A tournament there in Hutch. So they're one, they're one game in to their tournament. So this is a big deal. Their students got a lot of big student section here. And the community members, Sterling uh, is, is here. Modest crowd right now on a Thursday afternoon, 2 o'clock. The one seed against the eighth seed. We could probably expect there not to be the biggest crowd for this opening round game. The Vikings, they're led by 5'10", junior Paige Martin, who averages 12 points, six rebounds a game. She is joined by 5'9", freshman Kipley Jacobson, who averages eight and six rebounds. As I mentioned, they are coached by Ben Packard, who, and some of you might recognize that name. He's in his second and a half year at the helm of the Vikings as he took over mid-year of 2020. Packard is a Sterling College graduate, and he... Um, he got his 200th win in the sub-state quarterfinals against KCC. Tomlinson and J.C. Calvaruzzo are All-State softball players. They helped the Vikings to a third-place finish in the 21-2A state tournament. As a team, the Vikings score 44 they give up 36, so not a lot of margin of errors, or for error, and they could be up against a buzzsaw tonight. While the Vikings are making their second appearance in the 50-year history, the Sterling Lady Black Bears, they're on their 10th tournament and their 26th game overall. The Bears are 15 and 10 overall in the state tournament with eight top four finishes in those nine previous trips since 1989 four state final appearances and one state title with that being last year's victory over St. Mary's Colgan. This current group of seniors as you've heard me mention over the last four seasons are 90 and 9. Now four straight tournament appearances and a state runner-up in 2019 and a state championship as I mentioned in 2021. The Black Bears are currently on a 37 game winning streak and it would be safe to say they are rolling into the state tournament. Their last three sub-state games out at Sublette last week, the Lady Black Bears won by an average of 32 points, three running clocks, and it was just absolutely dominating. Sterling this year won their third consecutive Kingman Eagle Classic, and they won their Sterling Invitational Tournament where they narrowly defeated 3A tournament entrant southeast of Saline in overtime and probably the uh, obviously the most competitive game for the Lady Black Bears this year. Sterling returns all five starters from last year's state championship team. Seniors, senior guards Callie Breyer, Lacey Farney, and McKenna Linden, and they're joined by their partners Sadie, Sadie Beagley and Benny Horsch off the bench. Sterling will bring in junior Kate Rowland and 6'5 freshman Lily Gray. I do have, as I mentioned earlier, for those of you who are joining me late, I do have some bad news. The Shark, also known as Clark Comley, he won't be on today. He's judging a music contest today, and uh, he made plans a long time ago. And, of course, if you know the Shark, he never checks his calendar and, uh, well, he will be here tomorrow, and as I said, weather permitting, we're assuming it'll allow us to be here, but we'll be back on at 1.30, 1 140 tomorrow. Actually, I'll take that back. Uh, Got to check the time for tomorrow's boys' games. Five of the eight girls' teams remaining in Class 2A have two losses or less with a six team at four losses, so it is quite a competitive tournament. In other games today, I, I mentioned uh, earlier that one loss Berean, and yes, that loss came to... Sterling three weeks ago, they face two loss Valley Heights. The third game features 21 and 0 and 2021 runner up Pittsburgh Colgan versus 17 and 6 Garden Plain. In the nightcap, the 22 and 1 Jackson Heights Cobras, who Sterling defeated in the opening round of the 2019 uh, state tournament at Hayes, they take on the Redmen of Smith Center. And it could be, I would say it's probably the second toughest bracket in any of the uh, girls' state tournaments this year. 
In other state tournament games of interest that might be of interest to you in Sterling are the 22-1 Central Plains Oilers who are, well, they're poised to win their eighth straight state championship. Yeah, you heard that right, eight. And their only loss, one of the, their two of their only losses, three losses in the last year has been to, yes, Sterling. Had to take care of a little business there. The other one is uh, southeast of Saline, as I mentioned earlier. They open with Goodland, and uh, Hugoton faces Santa Fe Trail at, and Nickerson, 22-1, and one, faces Frontenac, and those are all over at the 3A tournament in Hutchinson, and you might be able to get over. I think Nickerson plays in the late game, so if you were in Sterling, you might want to jump over there and see Division One signee. Miss Jones, her first name has slipped me, but she is just a junior, so uh, she's got a ways to go before she uh, attends Arizona State. If you get to Nickerson both win, they will meet in the semis, while Southeast could face a rematch of the Sterling Invitational semifinal in which Hugoton uh, lost to the Trojans in overtime. That would have to take place in the final. And Division 1A, Division One, 22 and 1 Little River faces Burlingame in what will probably be the toughest tournament with uh, six teams with 20 or more wins. And so we're just about four minutes from tip off here in Bramlage. Both teams are warming up. If you're familiar with Bramlage, uh, we are looking at the scores table facing West and the Sterling crowd is behind the scores table, so if you're if you're watching, if you're not watching online and you've watched any K-State games, the uh, cameras are behind the bench, and that's where we're facing. So as we describe this to you, Sterling will start on the right end and Mission Valley on the left. Sterling bench will be right in front of me, and they will be what would be considered the visitors' bench during the K-State games and Mission Valley will be on the visitors bench, which is the home bench when uh, Kansas State plays. I want to give a shout out to the Sterling Grade School, who Principal Brennan Riffle has just texted me and said that uh, the grade school is watching and syncing up our broadcast. So I do appreciate it. At least I'll have somebody listening to us, but the sad thing is the shark, the shark is not here. Try to have a live scoreboard up for you if I can get my wife to do it. Mission Valley is, uh, if you're not familiar with it, they're just southwest of uh, Topeka, about 37 miles. So if you kind of get an idea where Topeka is, uh, you'll have a pretty good idea where they sit, kind of out, it's a consolidated school as I mentioned. And so we're just about two minutes from the starting lineups and we'll be back. Actually, I need to read to you a, a PSA that we're required to do here from the State Activities Association. Ethics, integrity, and respect are values important in our daily lives. Get Mrs. Richter straightened out here. Well. Ethics, integrity, and respect are values important in our daily lives. All of these important values are learned by participation in interscholastic activity programs. During competition, they are translated into one word, sportsmanship. Sportsmanship is one of the strongest educational lessons and lifetime values taught by interscholastic activities. This is a public service message from your Kansas State High School Activities Association and the Sterling Bulletin and the Black Bear Broadcasting. We're now just 48 seconds from the, the uh, opening lineups and 
the full introduction of the teams and managers, athletic trainers and coaches. And we will pause so you can, you can hear those as well. Mrs. Lewis is about an uh, arm's length from me. <laughs> Mrs. Crandall, looking cool like that. <laughs> you should. I'm close enough I can touch to him, touch them.
There's the opening starting lineup. Sterling, of course, will start. There are five seniors. Lacey Farney, the irritant. McKenna Linden, the fullback. Long arms of Benny Horse. Sadie Beagley in the middle and point guard and piston, Callie Breyer. Sterling going left to right. Again, if you're watching, uh, if you're uh, familiar with Bramlage, uh, we are facing the benches. So usually the camera is, is behind the scores table. We're facing the, both the benches and the scores table. Benning will jump against Paige Martin. Benning will win the tip. And what I noticed about Mission Valley in the and McKenna takes <laughs> no time before I can get the word out. She drains a three from the right, the right wing, and Sterling quickly up three to zero. Sterling, of course, in man to man. I didn't even get a chance to see what Mission Valley came out in. They were going to be in a, I was guessing a one three one, but what I saw in film, the harassing defense of the Sterling Lady Black Bears will be a whole lot to contend with. Tomlin said, oh, well, Morgan will drive the middle and find herself in for a five-footer that crawls over the rim. Sterling quickly pushes it up the floor. Sterling up three to two. McKenna with another three, and that off, but the long arms of Benny. Rebounds no good. Sadie nearly gets it. Benny gets it back and scores and will be fouled. Seven oh nine left. Benny misses it, but Callie saves it. Paige Martin comes up with it. Sterling again, full court pressure. Tomlinson, the post, brings it up. Five eight junior harassed by Sadie Beagley. Lacey Farney has drawn the tough assignment on Paige Martin. She, I take that back. She's got J.C. Calvaruzzo. Martin from three. Misses no good. Callie with the rebound. Lacey leaks out. Benny leaks out. Up ahead to McKenna. McKenna will drive middle, throw it up, and probably get called with a charge as she does. Her first foul, first team foul. Sterling up 5-2. to two, 6.39 left here in the opening quarter and opening game of the Sterling Invitational. Coach Rowland up off the bench. Sterling will apply pressure, asking her uh, defense to get up and pressure farther. Calvaruzos harassed by the irritant Lacey Farney. And Lacey will, Lacey will be called with her first foul. So two quick team fouls on Sterling. 6.29 left in the first. Into the game quickly is Adeline Bloomfield, the 5-4 freshman, although she, she looks a heck of a lot taller than 5'4". She's nearly head-to-head -head with or eye-to-eye -eye with Callie. McKenna nearly comes up with a steal on the inbound, and Benny does. Benny throws it between three. Mission, <laughs> I don't know how she got that in there. And we've got chaos here as finally Paige Martin comes up with it, and Mission Valley will retake possession. Kipley Jacobson. Drives to the top of the key. She's harassed by Benny Horse. They'll throw it away. Callie with a steal. She'll drive for a layup and no foul. Late whistle. She fell pretty hard on her hand there. She's under the basket. She hops up. Bites her fingernail. First foul on J.C. Cavaruzzo. Her first. Callie knocks it down, 6-2, Sterling, 5.57 left in this opening, opening quarter, Callie nails both, Sterling quickly up, 5, Callie will try to go for a steal on the freshman Adeline Bloomfield, but she'll run over her and knock her out of bounds, first foul on Callie. Mission Valley has to somehow figure out how to slow this game down, and that they can't possibly play a game in the 50s or 60s. Martin takes it down the middle, tried to pass it to Kip.
Oakley Jacobson. It will go off a black bear. Out goes Morgan Tomlinson. In is, I believe, Kaylee Van Meter. Jacobson will throw it in bounds. Couldn't get it or couldn't get it in bounds and throws it off the back of Callie Breyer and it bounces out. Martin with the air ball, but a nice rebound, but no good by Kaylee Van Meter. McKenna comes up with it, but she'll be called with a charge as she comes up with the rebound and falls to the floor. It'll be Mission Valley ball. Sterling will zone out of bounds. Callie, Sadie, and Benny on the baseline. McKenna and Lacey at top. Bloomfield stuck over here, guarded. This will be Kipley Jacobson with a three, no good. McKenna battling for the rebound. Martin comes up with it, but she'll be stripped from behind by McKenna. McKenna's off to the races on the left side and will be fouled for the second time by J.C. Cavaruzzo, which will be her second foul. McKenna will head to the line for two free throws. Sterling up 7-2, to two, 520 remaining in this opening quarter. Both teams with three fouls. McKenna has it go in and out. Cavaruso will stay in the, in the game. McKenna drops the second one. Sterling up by six. Eight to two again, 520. Martin brings it up all by herself, splits everybody, and as she passes it to Bloomfield, McKenna runs from behind. Steals it. McKenna up to Benny. Now we're in the forecourt. Callie passes it to McKenna. Just off to the right side of the key. She'll miss a three. Callie will grab it. And the 1-3-1 one, one of Callie finds Sadie down on the baseline just inside that 1-3-1. One, one. And Sadie will get her first attempt and just miss that. Martin up. Finds Cavaruso here on the left side. She finds... And there's another steal, pardon me. Another steal as it was tried to be forced inside to Kipley Jacobson. McKenna goes left, throws up the left hand and is good. It was contested by Adeline Bloomfield. And now 10-2, 427 left here in the first. Lacey has Calvaruso stuck at the top of the key. Martin from 12, looks, she'll take it, no good. Callie Breyer with the rebound was stripped. Martin comes up with it. She'll miss. Callie fighting again. McKenna will find. Dives out of bounds. Ends up on the concrete. Lacey ahead to Benny Horst for the layup. And McKenna says, Coach Roland, I'm dying. And that'll be a timeout by the, by the Vikings. Full timeout. 4.04 left here in the opening quarter. And it's a... Turn my volume down so I'm not blowing you out so much here. Sterling leads 12 to 2 now, up by 10, and uh, Mission Valley's got to find some way to slow this thing down. But the the pressure of Sterling's half-court man-to-man defense just speeds them up way too much, and they're finding basically any shot they can get, they could they'll take and it hasn't worked out real well so far. Lily Gray checks in, as does Kate Rowland. McKenna Linden and Sadie Bigley both check out. Again, Sterling stays a full court man. Lily will guard the basket. Benny's going to guard Paige Martin, their leading scorer. And she'll dribble and be defended by Lily. Cavaruso with the three. Lily with the rebound. Callie will push it quickly. Decides she'll pull up and hit the three, and she does. 16 to 15 to 2. Sterling, 338 left in the first. Lacey harassing Calvaruso, and Lily will come over and help her. She drives to the baseline. She'll get hipped, and Lily will be called for her first foul. 
Sterling will zone out of bounds. Mission Valley in a box set to the right side or left as we face it of the basket. Find Morgan Tomlinson. Martin will shoot another three. Freshman Addie Bloomfield with the rebound, and they'll start again. Tomlinson again from three just to the right side of the key. No good. Benny with the rebound. She'll find Callie. Callie will gently push. She has Lily down low. Lily will throw. <laughs> She kind of got pushed, falling away, and kissed it off the backboard, and it drew nothing but net off the board. Sterling up 17-2, to two, three minutes now remaining. Jacobson finds another three. It's short as Lily contested it. Kipley Jacobson out-rebounds Kate Rowland, and Black Bear's getting killed on the boards right now. Jake, or Tomlinson ends up with it, drives middle for the 10-footer, and scores 10-4. Callie quickly up. Benny can't handle it, saves it, but will return it to Paige Martin, and the pace is frenetic. Adeline Bloomfield drops a three. 2.23 left, Sterling up 10. Sterling quickly up, Lacey on the baseline gets bumped by Calvaruzzo, and that will be her third foul, if I'm not mistaken. That'll get Kaylee Van Meter off the bench. That's her second foul as the PA. If you're familiar with Bramlage, they don't put the individual fouls like high school gymnasiums do. McKenna and Sadie return. So Lily, or, uh, Lacey and uh, Benny can grab a quick breath. 218 left. Callie will shoot it again. This one is good. Three-point bu bucket by Callie Breyer to the right side of the key. Sterling leads 20-7. to 7, 207 left here in the opening game of the or the opening quarter of the opening game Sterling just continues to harass Tomlinson stopped out at the top of the key now McKenna draws Martin and Martin will push off with the forearm and knock McKenna down for a charging foul be Martin's first personal that will be the fifth team foul on the Vikings 151 left here in the first quarter Mission Valley stays in there, 1-3-1. One, one. They'll go into Lacey. Callie didn't put quite enough air on it. Martin will steal it. She'll go all the way around McKenna. She bumps into Ma McKenna, but McKenna will be called for the foul. McKenna's second. That will send uh, Martin to the free throw line for two. She'll knock down the first one. Benny Horsch and Lacey Farney will check back in. 133 left as Martin knocks those or the first one down. Lily Gray and McKenna will check out. Martin's second is good. What I noticed on film that Mission Valley struggles getting back, and that has been uh, no exception tonight. Kate has Benny at the top of the key, finds Sadie down with the left hand on the block, and she scores 22 to 9, 116 remaining. Martin straight up, that seems to be their best offense, is her just driving to the basket. Instead, she'll pass to Kaylee Van Meter, who will be fouled maybe by Benny Horsch, two free throws there. I believe that's Benny's first. I, I don't, she hasn't fouled, and if it indeed was hers. Kaylee Van Meter, 5'6", senior, senior, knocks down the first one with 107 left. That's the 16 foul on Sterling. Seconds off, no good. Sadie with the rebound. She finds Kate. Kate at the point right now. Kelly at the right wing. She finds Benny on the low block, and she'll score. Pass from the top of the key in, and Sterling is having its way down in the low block. 51 seconds left. Sterling up 24 to 10. 
Martin says, I'll shoot it. No good. Lacey has it go off her hands. Picked up by Kipley Jacobson. She'll be stripped. Sadie rips it away from Kaylee Van Meter. Callie quickly pushes, finds Benny on the left side as she dribbled right and basket. Benny basket, Callie Breyer assist, Sterling up 26 to 10, 22 seconds left. Now Martin against Callie, she'll stop 25 feet from the basket and is stuck. She'll throw it nearly away, gets it back, finds Van Meter down low. It'll be stripped from her and Sterling is just everywhere. Tomlinson, Van Meter decides to shoot it and she won't get it off so the harassing Sterling Lady Black Bear defense is just daunting right now. As the Sterling Bland plays start wearing black. And I apologize if I've been blowing you out. It wasn't intentional. Winter in Kansas is filled with many changes. For icy winds, yes, and gentle snow, hopefully that's it tomorrow. It's time to enjoy excitement of interscholastic activities. Thousands of Kansas high school students need your support and encouragement. The Kansas State High School Activities Association and its members' schools provide thrills and suspense. For a lifetime of memories, see another part of education come to life through interscholastic activities. A public service message from your Kansas State High School Activities Association and the Sterling Bulletin and Black Bear Broadcasting. The haunting howls of start wearing black resonating, echoing inside Bramlage Coliseum as Mission Valley gets it at half court right next to me. Sterling at 26 to 10. 16 fouls, the Vikings with five. Tomlinson tried to take Sadie Beagley off the dribble on the left wing as Sterling's covering everybody out. There is no such post player for the Vikings and so Mission Valley will turn it over, Tomlinson did. Still in that 1-3-1, Lacey Farney will throw it away as Paige Martin jumps in in front of it as she was trying to get it to Sadie Beagley. Tomlinson drives against Sadie. She'll get her own rebound and follow. Sterling really kind of getting outboarded on their defensive rebounds. Callie will push it left to Lacey on the left side near the Mission Valley bench. Now Callie at the top of the key, 714 left. Sterling up by 14. Lacey looks middle. Nobody finds Sadie at the top of the key. Sadie hit a three last week. That's not open now. McKenna now at the top of the key, right, or uh, Callie finds cross-court pass to Sadie Beagley across the lane from the top of the right down to the left low block, and Sadie can't handle that, and that will go out of bounds. Kate Rowland checks in for Lacey Farney, and Lily Gray checks in for Sadie Beagley. 6.58 left. Thank all of you for joining us. Got a good audience out there. No shark tonight, but... I'll do the best I can. It's pure basketball, I guarantee that. Tomlinson, who's decided she's going to be the one that uh, takes the offense on her shoulders, will dribble it off her knee as she was going against Lily, and that'll be another turnover for, for the Vikings. Kaylee Van Meter checks into the game for Tomlinson. Tomlinson walks to the bench. She thought that went off Lily's knee but the official who was standing right in front of it disagreed. Mission Valley stays in their 1-3-1, one, one, and it's not a very active one either. Benny at the low, the low short corner finds Lily sliding to the middle, which we've seen a few times this year, and she scores 28-12, 6-27 left. Calvaruso being hounded by Kate Rowland. Kate will run into the moving pick of Kaylee Van Meter, who will be called for the foul. And I believe that might be Van Meter's That's her second foul, so the 16th foul on 
Mission Valley as they're getting in a little bit of foul trouble here against Mission Valley with another possession where no shot was even attempted. Sterling playing with Benny in the low left short corner. Callie drives to the middle and is stopped. She'll find McKenna on outside for a three. Lily with the rebound has it stripped by Van Meter. Callie will key it in on the right side as we face it. Sterling lined up four along the baseline. Benny from thought about three finds Lily on the baseline. No good. Martin with the rebound. Martin will push. Hounded by two Sterling Lady Bears. Callie and Kate will harass her. She finds Van Meter at the three-point line. And the home crowd or the visitors wanted a shot. Martin guarded now on the right side by Kate Rowland. Jacobson, the freshman, drives baseline against Benny. Somehow gets it to Van Meter out to Cavaruso from just in. It is a three-point line. There are three lines or three-point, three-pointer, as I say. There are three lines on the floor. That will be an offensive. That will be an offensive foul, a charge on McKenna Linden, who picks up her third foul, I believe. That will quickly get Lacey off the bench, as well as Sadie Beagley, who will give Benny Horsch a rest. 28-15, 5-21 left in the second. Mission Valley with a little momentum here. Sterling continues to extend the defense well beyond the three-point line. Sadie now has drawn Martin. She'll drive her into Lily Cavaruso with a nice catch on the baseline, but she'll step out of bounds right in front of me. 28-15, 5-0-5, second quarter. Sterling with 17 fouls. Mission Valley with six. So Sterling was poised to blow this thing wide open, but Mission Valley has been able to convert a couple baskets here. Or at least one. Sadie goes down the middle and scores with her left hand on the left side. 30 to 15, 447 left. Cavaruso again hounded by the irritant Lacey Farney. She'll pick up her dribble, finds the freshman Adeline Bloomfield. And now the other freshman, Kipley Jacobson, drives middle on a little weave. Martin says, forget the weave. I'm shooting it. She drops the bomb. 30 to 18, Mission Valley. Callie quickly up. She'll fake a pass to Lacey, and she'll fire up an air ball. And that will go to the Mission Valley Vikings. Morgan Tomlinson back into the game. She'll replace Adeline Bloomfield. Sterling continues its man-to-man -man full court pressure. Callie hounding, hounding Martin. She'll get it over the timeline just enough. Jacobson finds Van Meter. Van Meter can't catch it, but she'll be fouled by either Sadie Beagley or Kate Rowland. It will be on Kate. That's Kate's first foul. That'll send Van Meter to the, to the free throw line. She makes the first. 30 to 19, 407 left. Sterling outscored 4 to 8 now in the quarter. 10 point lead. Now, as we head to the four minute mark, Kate finds Sadie at the free throw line. She'll fire up a, a basket and makes it, and she's fouled by. Morgan Tomlinson, who drops her shoulders, pulls her hair back, and will send Sadie to the free throw line for the bonus. 3.58 left in the half. Benny Horse returns. Lily Gray to the bench. Sadie will make that one and complete it. 33 to 20, 3.53 left. Tomlinson says, I'll fire that one, no good. Lacey Farney comes up with it, and there's a mess of people. And the officials aren't sure what they want to call here. They're discussing it, and so they're going to call a jump as two Vikings and 
Lacey Farney ended up with it, file out of bounds. Sterling with the possession. 3.46 left. Mission Valley still in that 1-3-1. One one. Kelly finds Benny on the short corner. Lacey will, she kicks it out. Benny did to Lacey. Lacey returns it to Benny. Benny turns with that patented left hand and the lead back out to 15. 327 left. Martin bumped into by Lacey, but she'll travel. And so another turnover, and Tomlinson puts her hands out and can't believe it. She said she was, Martin was fouled. 319 left. Both teams in the bonus now. Kate Rollins skip pass to Lacey. Lacey back to Callie at the top of the key. Lacey, Benny in the short corner, sees Kate across. Kate drives middle, finds Benny. Benny left hand, might have been blocked. Adeline Bloomfield with the rebound, and Cavaruso will bring it up. Lacey will force her to the left side over here. Lacey harassing her as Lacey does. She'll stop, though, just outside the three-point line. No good. Callie goes for the rebound, and she'll push. Three on three. Callie will pull up from 12 and knock it down. 237 left. Now Sterling not in their full court pressure now. Martin will drive middle right by Benny and Sadie, and Sadie will, or Benny will pick up a foul. So Sterling doing really kind of a poor job of stopping the dribbler, and that's what Coach Rowland is letting them know. That'll Benny second, 230 left, and It'll be a 30-second timeout. 30-second timeout. St Sterling. Again, Berean Academy plays right after this, so if you have the NFHS, uh, uh, if you have their, uh, if you've already paid for it, you might as well watch it. They'll take on... I believe Valley Heights right after this from Blue Rapids. 21 and 2 against 22 and 1. And of course, Sterling defeated Berean Academy like three weeks ago. And uh, probably their second toughest game of the season. Martin will go head to the free throw line for a. Yes, they're giving her two. She was uh, went to the basket uncontested, went the full length of the floor. First one is up and hits the front end, back end, and rolls in. 37-21, 2 left here in the half. Second is short, but rolls in as well. 37-22, 2 left. Callie quickly up to Kate. Kate just on the free throw line extended outside the three-point line. Callie will back it up on the power cat. Gets a screen from Kate, cross-court pass to Benny. Benny can't convert, and Kipley Jacobson, the freshman, ends up with the rebound. She'll bring it left hand. Nobody finally, Sadie stops her. Jacobson will dribble around Sadie and pick up that foul. And so as long as the, as long as the Black Bears continue to extend the defense back that far, the, the Vikings are able to dribble around Sterling's defenders. Morgan Tomlinson with the free throws. The first one's no good. 207 left in the first or first half. Sadie with her second foul. Tomlinson short on the second. Benny with the rebound. Martin will harass both Benny and Callie, but now will, will retreat to her center position in their 1-3-1. Callie off a pick. Finds Sadie on, a, on the baseline. Cross-court pass to Lacey. Lacey drives, finds Benny. It will be stolen. And Lacey will pick up another foul. That's two. So Sterling in some decent foul trouble as that will be the double. Now Mission Valley in the double bonus. Lacey with two. Uh, McKenna with three. Sadie with two. And Benny with two, Kate with one, and Callie with one. This will send Paige Martin back to the free throw line. 150 left. Martin drops that one. Yeah. 
She makes both, 37 24, 150 left. Kelly drives the middle, has it tipped away. She was trying to get to Benny, and another turnover by Sterling. Three Black Bears harass Martin, but Tomlinson will get it. She'll dribble it off her knee. Benny picks it up, finds Kelly. Kelly will stop from 10. A little too long, gets her own rebound, and she'll reset this thing. Finds Kate in the corner. Kate baseline. Finds Sadie. Nice catch. Sadie will turn it over. So Sterling in a in a whole bunch of turnovers. And just like that, Cavaruso turns it right back over to Sadie. Sadie finds Benny. I should say Callie finds Sadie. Sadie finds Kate Rowland, who will drop the three. So the bleeding stops for a little bit here. 59 seconds left in the first half. 40 to 24. Martin stopped at the power cap by Callie. And Coach Packert will take a 30-second timeout as Tomlinson or, or Martin was about to get a five-second call. 49 seconds left. Text from Phil Bressler, principal, and I got a picture from him. Says there are 85 strong Black Bears plus Black Bears supporting the girls from the south and the west in the auditorium. Sterling has been on the verge of blowing this thing farther open as their lead's up by six, but just can't quite get over the hump. Four turnovers in a row during that uh, little run there under the two-minute mark has kept this from being a wider margin than it is. Sterling boys team directly behind me. Sterling pep, or the pep club to my left and the band to my farther left behind the basket. You might be able to see them if you're watching. Cavaruso drives on Lacey. Lacey needs to avoid it. She'll get blocked by Kate Rowland. Kate can't hang on to it. Cavaruso sees Tomlin Tomlinson on the baseline, throws it up. No good. It's an air ball. Martin finds the rebound, but she'll step out of bounds. So the one thing I will say about the Vikings is they're quick to the offensive boards. Some of that could be attributed to their misses. I'll just say it that way. 25 seconds left as Callie will stand on the power cat right at half court, and it will she'll let it run down. She's closely guarded by Caval Russo. She'll, she'll break the timeline and have it stolen by Caval Russo, who comes up with it with 12 seconds left. And Kate Rowland will pick up her second foul. So instead of getting the final shot with 12 seconds left, Kate Rowland fouls after the steal and will send Cavaruso to the free throw line for two free throws as they are in the double bonus. Again, 11.8 seconds to be more exact. They have shot a lot of free throws, and I'll try to get those stats for you at halftime. She knocks down the first. Van Meter checks in for Tomlinson, who I believe has two fouls. Van Meter with two of her own. 40-25, 12 seconds left. Badly missed. Officials will blow the whistle. Didn't think it hit the rim. I thought it did, but it goes off the backboard, so Sterling will get possession. 11 seconds left. Mission Valley will fall back as they have all evening to their half court or their quarter court, 1-3-1. One, one. Callie will move completely down the court, as I would too. Nobody will contest her. Callie calls for a pick from Lacey. She'll go the other way to her left, finds Le Kate in the left corner. Kate no good. Martin with the rebound, two seconds, one. She'll fire it up directly from half court. That nearly went in. So at the half, Coach Rowland will have a ton to talk about as uh, – her Lady Black Bears score 40, give up 25, and probably doesn't feel as good about that 15-point lead as she should. School activities teach discipline, teamwork, and dedication to students while providing them with structured, supervised learning activities. Encourage your son and daughter to participate in school activities. Participation opens the door to a lifetime of enjoyment and excitement. The Kansas State High School Activity Association and the Sterling Bulletin. 
encourages you to make activities and academics curriculum partners. I'm going to step away for just a moment here, try to grab some stats from the press room, and then I'll be back and maybe have somebody to uh, visit with, possibly. The Shark isn't here to take care of those items. You're watching 2A State Basketball, Sterling Black Bears on shsblackbears.com, brought to you by the Sterling Bulletin and Black Bear Broadcasting.
as you hear the Sterling Band rocking it to my left. Give you a few stats here. Sterling scored 40 on 16 of 27 shots for a sizzling 59%. Four of nine from three for 44%. Four of six from the free throw line. And you would think that they would be uh, farther ahead than just 15 here as the ladies enter return to the court. For Mission Valley, they were 6 of 22, 27% from the field, 3 of 13 from 3, but they did shoot 14 free throws, making 10 of those for 71%. Those free throws keeping them in the ball game. Turnover 17, but Sterling with an uncharacteristic 9, uh, 17 in the first half. Sterling also... Uh, being out rebounded 16 to 13 and Mission Valley with nine, nine offensive rebounds, which is way too much for any coach uh, to want to uh, give up. Foul trouble was the uh, was the concern for Coach Rowland as Lacey Farney ended up with two fouls. McKenna, of course, sat most of the second quarter with three. Benny with one. Callie with one. Sadie with one. I had her for two. And Kate with three. I didn't see Kate pick up those three, so one of those that I gave to Sadie must have ended up with Kate. Lily with a foul. Sterling Bland. You don't want to go to war. 142 left. Remaining in the half, the Vikings have returned. Now Sterling will be right in front of me. Sterling back in their huddle with Coach Rowland. Give you one more PSA from the State Activities Association, the Kansas State High School Activities Association. Conducts festivals and championships in debate, piano, and scholars bowl. All of those have since passed, but uh, we have forensics heading your way. Support your students and schools by attending these state activities during March. You attended them during January and February. The State High School Activities Association truly is an active participant in the education of Kansas youth. This is a public service message from your Kansas State High School Activities Association and the Sterling Bulletin and Black Bear Broadcasting. Mission Valley will key it in and they will be going to my right left to right Tomlinson out at the top she dribbles to by Sadie on the right side throws it up short follows her own rebound misses it and Sadie will lose it out of bounds but not before Van Meter is able to get her finger on it it'll go to the Black Bears so another turnover for for Mission Valley
Black Bears led 26 to 10 after the first quarter. We're outscored 15 to 14 in the second. Thus our margin of 15. McKenna jumps back in, tries to lead it off the second half like she did the first with a three-point play or a three-pointer. Sadie gets the rebound, throws it up and misses everything. Martin goes left to the middle, right by three Black Bears. She'll miss the layup. McKenna with the rebound. It's one on three. Now she'll find, thought she was going to hit Sadie Benny from beyond the college three-point line. Misses the three. Sadie with the rebound, throws it up. No good, but she'll draw the foul on Van Meter. Van Meter. Van Meter with her fourth foul. Sadie to the free throw line, knocks down the first, 41-25. That will get Adeline Bloomfield into the game. Van Meter checks out the 7.05 mark. Sadie with the second. Clark always disagrees with me that the three-point lines, three of those lines out on the floor confuse people, but he says no. I say yes as Sadie drops it. 41-26, McKenna hounding Kipley Jacobson. Now Martin Cavaruso says, I'll launch it from deep behind the three-point line, and she drops it. 41-28. 42-28, sorry, 6.45 left. Lacey on a pass from Benny on the three-point line. McKenna fights for it, gets the rebound, and it'll go off Cavaruzzo as she both of them fell to the floor. Kelly will key it in just off the right corner, left corner of the baseline. She feeds Sadie. Sadie will have it stripped, but Lacey sees McKenna on the left baseline, and she'll drop that one. So 45-28, 6-19 left in the third. Martin at the point, and that seems to be their offense. She just drives middle and gets where she can. McKenna with a playing with her three fouls, reaches in and strips Kipley Jacobson, but it'll go out on McKenna. So McKenna not being shy, playing with those three fouls. Martin, another deep three, no good. Jacobson with the rebound. Cavaruso with the miss, and that will be a foul as Callie gets the rebound, a foul on Adeline Bloomfield. I believe that's her first. It is her first. Again, Mission Valley sticks with their 1-3-1. One, one. Kelly at the point, waiting for McKenna get to get to the right baseline. McKenna feeds Sadie, but it'll be stolen by Martin. Martin comes up with it. She'll push. Knocked out of her hands. It's a mess. Bloomfield ends up with it and then throws it away to McKenna. McKenna will drive. Harassed by both Jacobsons. Or a Jacobson and a Tomlinson, and McKenna will go flying into the cheerleaders out of bounds. Kipley Jacobson with the foul. That's her second. Sends McKenna to the line. 5.33 left. Sterling up 46 to 28. McKenna with the last four. She nails both. Sterling out to a 19-point lead. 5.33 left in the third. Sterling stays there extending man-to-man. -man. Martin at the top of the key. She'll launch a three. No good. Benny with the rebound, and she'll throw it ahead. Oh, my gosh. What a pass. Lacey will be pushed from behind by Adeline Bloomfield for her second. Benny took it from the baseline. Looked like a quarterback throwing a streak as Lacey got behind the defender and dropped it right in. Got Benny tying her shoe back down at the end, and uh, finally she smiles. And as Coach Rowland said, hey, I got my player down there. You're not uh, – you're going to throw it in without her. 
Callie keys it in to Benny. Benny hands it off to her. Benny on the baseline. Benny up. Benny good as she scores over Morgan Tomlinson. So Sterling now commanding lead of 21, 501 left in the third as Van Meter gets off the bench. Come back in. Martin dribbles from one side to the other, guarded by Sadie. She'll try to pass it to Cavaruso. Lacey will tip it in the backcourt, but Cavaruso will pick it up. Tomlinson skip pass over to Martin. Clear across the court goes off Martin's hand into the Mission Valley student section. And that will be a timeout, a full timeout. Taken by Mission Valley. Sterling out 49 28, 34 32 left in the third quarter. And I hope all of you do appreciate our Sterling Pet Band, but uh, if you're here, you would appreciate it even more as you can just barely hear the maybe 10 members of the Mission Valley Band. It is a big arena that sucks up a lot of sound, and so... Sterling Pet Band will play the next dead ball or next time out or at the end of the quarter. I do appreciate all of you tuning in. I, I am quite honestly a little overwhelmed by how many are listening to our broadcast. So thank you. It does make it worth the time to do this. Of course, I'd be here anyway watching the ladies. Tomorrow will be with the Shark. We'll have to work out some uh, some details. Calling these games are a little diffi more difficult than what you would s see when we're on video. Kate rolling right in front of me, looking for a pick from McKenna. She finds McKenna on the baseline. Sadie posted up in the middle. McKenna with a cross-court pass to Callie, who will drain the three. I believe her third three of the evening, 414 left. Sterling out to 24 last week in their sub-state. All three games were the 30-point mark and running clock. Adeline Broomfield with the Bloomfield with the miss. Sadie with the rebound. Kate will push it to the middle. Look side, find Callie. Callie hops, launches a bomb, and she'll drop that one. 55 to 28, 348. And so it appears that the will has nearly been broken of the Lady Vikings from Eskridge and Mission Valley. Van Meter throws a cross-court pass trying to find Cavaruzzo, throws it out of bounds. Must have been touched by McKenna. Kipley Jacobson will key it in bounds right in front of the Mission Valley bench. Kate Rowland on the floor. Lacey Farney went out at the last timeout. Martin against McKenna, she goes around her, up over Kate Rowland. Misses, Sadians takes it away from Martin. Callie will push, she's got one on three, pulls up from just inside the keyhole and will knock it down. 57 to 28, Sterling now up 29. And if they push this to 30, it'll be a running clock in the third, fourth quarter. Cavaruso says not so fast as she drops a three from top of the key. 57-31, 2.56 left in the third. McKenna on the baseline. Sadie posted up down low. Callie from the right wing sees Benny. Benny sees a skip pass to McKenna all the way over in front of us. Has it knocked out from behind her, stripped by Adeline Bloomfield, but will be a foul on Bloomfield, which will be her second. And Sterling will, that's just, that's the fifth team foul on the Vikings, 241 left. Tomlinson checks back in. Morgan does. Out goes Bloomfield. McKenna gets it, returns it to Callie. She'll miss the three-pointer. Kate battles for the rebound, knocks it out to McKenna. McKenna nearly loses it, throws it to McKady. 
Sadie and has it knocked out by a Viking. Callie keys it in, finds McKenna on the baseline. McKenna will three no good. And Calvaruzzo with the rebound, 226 left. Martin at the top of the key against Callie. She'll drive right, hands it off to Calvaruso. Calvaruso from three. This one's not even close. It's a 25 footer that she shot 28. And it'll go out of bounds. End of the game is Lily Gray. First action of the third quarter. She'll check in for Benny Horsch. 210 left. Sterling up by 26. 210 left in the third. Scoreboard shows the first. Have to train my wife on how to uh, get that portion of it. Kelly at the top of the key. Kate wide open. Nobody Gardner. McKenna finds Lily, but too low a pass for, Lil for Lily. She's got to throw it higher. And Martin will tip it off of Lily's hands as Lily tried to save it. And turnover Sterling. 149 left in the third. Sterling has not fouled this half. Mission Valley with five. Calvaruso drives against Kate, stopped by Sadie. Sadie will be, reaches in and will pick up her third foul. Second foul. Martin on the right wing, faced, guarded by Sadie. She returns at the Calvaruso at the top. Tomlinson on the left corner. Three, no good, but Sadie might have picked up another one as she fouls Kaylee Van Meter. So two quick fouls on Sadie and the Black Bears. 129 left in the third. End of the game, Adeline Bloomfield. She'll check in for Van Meter, who uh, has four. Benny Horsch will check in for Sadie. Sadie heads to the heads to the bench. Hasn't been a vintage. Uh, Sadie Beagley game, but it will be before this tournament's over. Morgan Tomlinson at the top of the key, guarded by Lily. She'll throw it right away. McKenna knocks it down. Benny comes up with it. Benny hands it off to Callie, but uh, as they'll be called for a travel because they had a shared ball. Callie can't believe it. I don't think she's maybe ever heard of that before, but she smiles and Mission Valley gets it under the basket. Calvaruso passes to Martin. Martin fires up a three. Tomlinson with the rebound. She, she was going to fire it up. Bloomfield thought about it. Calvaruso standing on the three-point line. Fires one up over Kate Rowland. Kate looks at her at the bench like, I can't believe she just made that. 57 seconds left in the third. 57 to 34, Sterling. Benny looks inside. Kate from the baseline will dribble. Nobody there. She'll lose it to Martin. Martin comes up with it. Drives around Benny. She's going to take it all the way. Stops at the free throw line. Misses, but Calvaruso with the rebound. And Callie will be fouled. Took one in the eye. And that's on Bloomfield. That's the 17th, 16th foul. 35 seconds left, Sterling up 23. Kelly across half court right at the top has Lily and Benny at the free throw line. Lily slides down to the low post. Kate on the right side finds Benny just on, on top of the three point line. Lily in the low post. McKenna baseline finds Kate. Kate at the free throw line, finds McKenna. McKenna drives baseline, tries to get it to Lily, knocked back in her face, tips it to Lily. Lily misses, and Benny with the foul. Charge to Kipley Jacobson with 7.9 seconds left in the third quarter. Benny heads at the free throw line. Sterling shot just six free throws in the first half. We're four of six. And Benny was 0 for 1. Benny makes the first. Seven, eight seconds left. 
Benny drops both of them, 58-35, Sterling. Calvaruso drives, she crosses half court, finds Jacobson in the corner, no good. Tomlinson with the rebound, and that will be the end of the third quarter as Tomlinson gives Benny a death stare. We're at the end of the third, start of the fourth, 59-34, Sterling comfortably in front. The Kansas State High School Activity Association is a nonprofit organization supported by 760 member schools. The State Activity Association and its member schools promote, develop, and direct interscholastic activities to contribute to a well-rounded and meaningful educational experience. The positive values of competition and good sportsmanship for both participants and spectators are continually encouraged. It's a public service message from your Kansas State High School Activities Association and the Sterling Bulletin and Black Bear Broadcasting. So Mr. Bressler, I think their principal is actually doing the roller coaster with them. So you got a challenger on your hands. Unfortunately, you won't see them do it as they... Uh, should not be around for Thursday. Sterling will have the possession to start this fourth quarter, leading 59 to 34. Kelly with it at the top of the key surveys was looking Lacey was setting a pick for Lily on the on the baseline Lacey will turn it over to Cavaruso and Cavaruso drive around her Lacey will try to strip Cavaruso misses the layup Sadie Beagley with the rebound she pushes it ahead two on one she's got Lily on the inside now the, the Vikings catch up Sadie can't handle the pass and so that'll go out of bounds and the Vikings will get it back. Seven twenty-six left in the fourth. Van Meter back into the game, playing with those four guarded by Sadie on the baseline. Tomlinson guarded at twenty-five feet by Lily Gray. Tomlinson fires it out of bounds. The junior does and Sterling will get possession. So the Benny Hort, or uh, Caitlin Cornelius into the game for the first time tonight, the senior. She'll check in for Lily. The other senior, Riley Richter, on the roster. She's out with a knee surgery, so she's done for the year. Callie fires a three and will nail it. I think it was her. The official was blocking me, 62-34. Sterling, 6.53 left. Van Meter drives middle, fires it out to Calvaruso from three. No good. Kelly with the rebound. She'll, be, she'll send Van Meter to the, to the bench because that'll be her fifth foul. I said second. I said fifth. It's her second personal foul. Sadie thought that she was fouled, but Callie was fouled, and so Callie will head to the free throw line. She'll make the first. Next one will put it at a 30 point margin at 6.45 and a running clock. And that will be it. And Sterling up now by 30, and that will do it for sure running clock the rest of the way. Cavaruso stuck at the power cat. She finds Martin. Martin gets a pick from Van Meter, and Van Meter basically throws a, I don't know if you call it a punch, but <laughs> she's frustrated. The senior with her third foul, she'll check out Adeline Bloomfield. Checks in. I'm sure the scores 
table, people don't realize that uh, once it's 30 that the clock will run. It's running now just because the ball's in bounds. Lacey gets a pick from Sadie. Sadie rolls the middle, fires it up, guarded by three. She's able to save it and get it out. Kate Rowland resets it. Caitlin Cornelius on the baseline to Callie Breyer. Callie on the middle, fires cross court to Lacey. Kate finds Callie and she'll shoot another three from deep and that will be good. 67 to 34, 556 left. Another turnover, Callie ends up with it. She'll go up and over Cavaruso. McKenna will check back in. 538 left, 69-34, Sterling. Tomlinson stripped by Sadie. Sadie goes to the floor with Martin and Tomlinson, and it'll be a held ball, and that will go to the Lady Vikings. Callie Breyer will check out for McKenna Linden. 527 left in the remaining in the fourth quarter of this game. Vikings making just their second appearance ever in the 50-year history of the tournament. First time was in 1981, so a really long drought. They were defeated then by six by Southwestern Heights over at Hutch in the 3A tournament. Tomlinson fires up another three. Lacey ends up with the rebound, but they'll call Lacey for a travel. Unfortunately, when you play the opening game and lose, it's a short trip to the tournament. Calvaruso fires up another air ball three, and Caitlin Cornelius with the rebound. Kate will fire it ahead to Lacey. Lacey comes back to get it. See Sadie streaking down the court, and Sadie with the layup assist. Farney. Basket. Beagley. 454 left. Martin travels, but no call. Caitlin extending the defense on Bloomfield and McKenna Linden will pick up her fourth foul as she fouls Martin. Benny Horsch will check in. 444 left. Third team foul on Sterling, 71-34. Martin to the free throw line. She'll drop the first. Sadie Beagley will check out for Benny. 71-35, 4.44 left. And maybe the clock doesn't run in the state tournament. I know the rule was sub-state tournament, but. She makes them both, 71-36. Lacey dribbles around the pick of Benny. She'll have it stolen by Bloomfield as the pass was headed to Kate. Roland Kate, though, somehow comes up with it. Caitlin throws it forward. McKenna comes back to get it. She fires it ahead to Lacey. Lacey with the pass underneath the basket to Benny. Benny, surprised, puts two hands over her face as she airballs it from two feet. Lacey strips it from Kipley Jacobson. She'll go up against Martin. Step through, and Lacey with the basket. 73-36, 4.02 left. Martin harassed by Lacey. Lacey barely touched her the, uh, previously when she got the steal. Just the possession earlier was more of a foul. That'll send her out of the game. Well, it won't as Avery Linden checks in for the final 3.53. And Sterling Faith Faith Eckert will come back in at, or come in at some point as Martin takes the inbounds and dribbles for a layup. 73-38. 3.40 now left. Caitlin Cornelius at the top of the right, right side three-point line finds McKenna. Benny does. Kenny on the right side in front of the bench. She dribbles over, finds Benny at the top of the key. Almost like they're playing keep away at this point. End of the game is Elsie Foster for Mission Valley. And Mission Valley's in no hurry to uh, extend this game. Benny smiling, finds Lacey. She'll turn it over. 
McKenna goes flying into the into the yeah. steps. Yeah. Bella Brownlee and Faith Eckert will check in. Out goes McKenna and Benny on the floor for Sterling is Lacey Farney, Avery Linden, Faith Eckert, Bella Brownlee, and senior Caitlin Cornelius. They spend a lot of time playing defense this year as 2.56 left as Martin drops a three, 73-41. Now 2.50 left. Avery Linden at the top of the key. Caitlin on the right side. She's playing guard without Riley being around. Avery finds Bella at the top of the key. Fires a pass to Faith. Caitlin on the right baseline. Now Faith gets it. She'll drive left-hand middle. Stop by Martin. Throw it away to Cavaruso. Cavaruso stops from 12 and knocks it down. 73-43. 2.20 left. Avery finds Bella on the right side. Caitlin in the corner. She'll throw it away to Cavaruzzo. Cavaruzzo drives against Lacey. Lacey gets her stopped. Fires up a turnaround. No good. Avery with the rebound and finds Lacey. Lacey now clears it and moves it to the middle. Goes around Martin. And nearly another turnover. Avery drives baseline. Left-handed. No good. Faith can't get the rebound. Elsie Foster does. Hands it off to Martin. 141 left. Martin's going to drive all the way, throws it up. No good. Faith with the rebound, but it will be a foul on Lacey Farney. That might be Lacey's fifth. And it will be. Kate Rowland will check in. And so 136 left. As the Sterling Boys team and the Pep Club say they get a get a play Friday Martin to the free throw line 136 left she knocks it down she's had a good night at the free throw line 73 44 136 remaining she makes both 73 45 Avery will clear the power cat at the top of the key and turn it over as she tried to pass to Kate Cavaruso with it and scores a layup. 73-47, 120 left. Caitlin drives right side looking for Faith, can't find anybody, throws it away. Paige Martin with the steal, she'll dribble it up. And she'll be blocked by Bella Brownlee, but she'll be, Bella will get her with the body. So Martin back to the free throw line. She shot, she was six for six in the first half. I can't tell you what she is right now. 103 left, remaining 16 foul on Sterling. Martin, if she hasn't been perfect, she's been close to it. 73-48 with a minute left. She knocks him down. One minute remaining. Kate at the, at the point now. She'll find Avery on the left side on this one through one. Bella in the middle. Bella drives. Be stolen. Stripped by Calvaruso. And I think Bella will. Be a foul on Bella. She was scrambling for it. She'll foul Cavaruso with 47 and a half seconds left. And they'll walk their way to the other end. Not a pretty sight at the end of the game for Coach Roland. The statistics will be a, a little misleading as far as turnovers go, but it hasn't been the greatest night for turnovers for Sterling. Cavaruso miss. Bella comes up with the rebound, and she'll clear it to Avery. 43 seconds left. And the state tournament run for Mission Valley 
will end. Really, I don't know if they were surprised, but they had, they had planned to have a good year, and I guess this does qualify for that. Unfortunately, they're running into the defending state champions. 23 seconds left as Avril dribbling against three, picks it up, fires it over to Kate. 15 seconds left. Mission Valley still pressuring Avery with it. Sterling will turn it over as the ball will go all the way down to the end line. And Van Meter, who chased it all, all the way, steps on it, and it goes out of bounds, and it will be out on Mission Valley with two and a half seconds left. Sterling will key it in. And the Lady Black Bears, actually Mission Valley somehow ended up with that. And Martin ends her, her junior season with a three as Sterling wins 73 to 52. So Sterling, an old hat, will extend their season once again for two more games regardless of outcome on Friday night or Friday afternoon. They will play on Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock at the winner of the Brian Academy Valley Heights game that will take place right after this one. The Sterling boys will play at 4 o'clock tomorrow against the Linden Tigers. Tune in at, at 3.45 as I will have a pregame on Linden. Give you a little insight into them. If Sterling boys should win... They will play Friday right after the girls at 4 o'clock against either Hillsboro or the Independent School uh, out of Wichita. Well, I can't thank all of you enough for checking in with us here on Black Bear Broadcasting and the Sterling Bulletin. Appreciate the Manhattan Visitors and Convention Bureau for allowing us to uh, broadcast. And we'll have the shark on tomorrow night as we'll bring you the boys and... So I'm not going to stick around much longer. Not a lot to recap here. You heard it all. So the Sterling Lady Black Bears continue their march for a second straight state tournament here at the 2022 two-way state tournament at Kansas State. Sterling wins 73-52. to 52. I am Brian Richter. Tomorrow join us at 345, 320 maybe, or 340, and you will hear a pregame with the Shark and I. Thank you for watching, listening tonight on Black Bear Broadcasting.